children playing is something we take for granted. But psychologists have discovered that play means much more to children than filling in the space between tea and bedtime. Play is a way for children to learn about life, the good and the bad. A toddler messing about with cups of water learns that you can't put a quart into a pint pot. A boy who has never played with hammer and nails isn't likely to be much of a handyman. And a girl who gets told off by her mother may be working off her anger when she smacks her doll. Children will always play, no matter what their environment is like. But some sorts of play are better than others. A child can be imprisoned in front of a television, or on the doorstep of a pub, or in a house full of beautiful things he mustn't touch. Children need space to run and shout. They have tremendous energy and vivid imagination. And if they get the chance, they can make their own adventures. But they need more time and patience than busy mothers can spare. And more in the way of materials and facilities than councils lay on in normal parts. The result is bored children, harassed mothers, and sometimes junior vandals. The alternative is to give children the chance of a richer kind of play, and this is what adventure play schemes are all about. In 1972, Robinson Square in Splot was a new scheme to be taken over eventually by the council. But for the summer, it was run by art student Spiggy Trailer Smith and his wife Chrissy, who's a teacher. Robinson Square was just a field with a large area of tarmac. The first Monday, we started to clear the area, getting rid of the glass and dangerous rubbish. Knowing that the Splot playground was to be slightly different from the other play schemes, and it was to be permanent, our attitudes towards the scheme had to include the wider perspective and involvement of the whole community. We tried to get structures up as soon as possible to let the kids know that this was something that would stay. At first the kids expected everything to happen instantly. They had to learn about planning and organisation and about putting a lot of work into something which only emerges over a gradual period of time. They began to look on the playground as theirs. They became concerned when a hammer was stolen or other kids tried to burn and destroy the playground. Though always present was the element that wanted to burn and destroy. The number of kids peaked about 120. There's a terrible lull about the fourth or fifth week, down to about 20 kids, but it soon picked up again towards the end. We had one kid who fought and destroyed all the time. In the playground, the other kids put pressure on him. If he wanted to belong to the playground, he had to change, and so he did. Vandalism is not being able to identify with anything. The playground isn't just a leisure centre or recreational centre or something to prevent vandalism. It has vast educational and social implications too. The Butte Town Community Support Group, a group of students, staffed the playground in Butte Town where play leader Jerry Stevens was born. We played semi-organised games which they got bored with very quickly. Dens would be built and then they would be knocked down again. Sometimes I think there's too much emphasis on construction. The adventure can simply be sharing the play leader's world, and vice versa. We found we violated a lot of norms, like the time we invited the kids from Hodges Square to come and play in Angelina Street. Kids are territorial. We sighted the playground in one territory, and there were fights with kids from other territories. The kids painted lions and elephants and their names all over this wall. We had to whitewash it afterwards at the insistence of the local authority. The 14 to 15 year olds once set out to systematically destroy what the younger ones had built during the day. They collected every scrap of wood on that playground and burned it. I eventually got round to talking to some of this group. They just said, you didn't include us. No one really wants accidents. But it isn't better for them to occur where assistance is available and without restricting energetic activities? This little fellow was back the very next day and his parents felt him to be in safe hands again. I feel the follow-through is very important. You offer something to children, a kind of alternative, and then you throw them back to play among the dustbins. In a way you say, yes, you can smoke and swear and play with hammers. Then they have to go back to their homes where this is not allowed. We made very firm relationships with people in the area. 
and our members of the group can go back into the homes and do some real work. Richard Evans was play leader on the permanent playground at the Marl, Grangetown, from Easter 1971. For the summer, he was joined by volunteers. The structures and buildings here are put up and constantly changed by kids of all ages, so they are used in more imaginative ways than something which is designed for a specific purpose. Structures may well be burnt or pulled down, but this is good because something new and better can be built. As a play leader, I wasn't trying to provide the activities I thought would be best, but rather to make possible the ideas that the children had. The kids might decide to build an obstacle course and run a sports day, and they could do that themselves. But if they wanted to build a huge tower and a rope bridge, then they would need a lot of help and encouragement. And if they wanted to go camping, then the play leader would have to make sure it was properly organised. Kids are very aware of the limits of what they can and can't do. They don't usually try to do things that are too difficult for them. Adventure playgrounds look dangerous places, but there will be few accidents providing the ropes don't break and the buildings don't collapse and the play leader is there to make sure they don't. If children have somewhere adventurous to play, where there is a challenge for them and they can test themselves out, then their abilities will develop very quickly. The older teenagers use the playground more as a meeting place, though from time to time they use the tower and ropes with great enthusiasm and become very involved in building the large structures. But in the long run, they need a building that can be used as a youth club and for dances. Transitions is the name of a community arts trust whose street theatre group worked on adventure playgrounds that summer. Jill Taylor is, like many of the actors, a former teacher. First of all, we do a street parade to collect the kids. We sing songs, tell everyone there's going to be a circus, and generally establish the characters. Back at the playground, everyone forms a circle to await the act. But it's soon discovered that the animals are missing. And so the clowns introduced the idea that the children could be the circus, and they practiced the various acts. We distribute basic materials, sacking, boxes and paint. The participation of the children is the key. Every child can participate at whatever level he feels safe. When a child says, I can't do so-and-so, what usually happens is that someone older does it for him. We give children a strong motive for learning. It may be something simple like learning to use scissors, or it may be a more sophisticated way to use their imagination. <laughs> The idea of these one-day things was to inject a playground with a stimulus. Afterwards, the play leader could use the impetus and develop the ideas. When we went back to the playground, we were invariably greeted by children singing the songs from the show. We learnt later that in one school class where children had to write about the best day of my holiday, many wrote about the day the circus came. We finish the day with another street parade, so that parents can see what the children have done. At the end of the summer, the people of Splot threw a street party, partly as a thank you to the play leaders and their volunteer helpers, and partly just for fun. Trestle tables were set up in Pontypridd Street, and local mothers supplied the food. The organisational base for the operation was the Lord Wimborne pub. The fathers ran a sports day at the park while the party was being prepared. The play leaders were thrilled by all this, not just because the parents appreciated their work, but also because the community had done something all together. A lot of parents had got interested in the play schemes. They provided materials, helped out at the playgrounds, 
and supervised activities like cooking and building. And the schemes had offshoots, like the youth club in Grangetown, which parents decided to organize. community service has run play schemes to prove they are necessary and worthwhile. If parents and councils disagree, then that's the end of it. On the other hand, if they agree, then they can run adventure playgrounds better than we can. And once the community has flexed its muscles organizing something for the children, perhaps it will turn to other local problems like looking after old people, or even bigger tasks like the housing crisis. We believe that the people of Splot, or Butte Town, or Llanishin, or wherever, if only they work together, can get far more done than a group of outsiders.